So here we are in this second part of triangle congruence. And so, so we're doing triangles congruent. But now there's an assumption that's being made. And what we're going to say is that they're not congruent. But how could they be? So it's not enough. There's not enough information. So then we're going to move on from there. We're not going to get stuck on that. We're just going to say, what else? What additional information? That's like the, the key to what we're looking at here. So what additional information do we need? All right, so let's, let's just go with that assumption that we don't have enough. We do need some more. What could it be? Let's start with number 12. It's, it's a little bit more straightforward because it has most of the markings, but it's just missing a little bit. So it says that it wants to do the side angle side pattern. And I see that I have a side here and I have a side here. So there's my side and there's my side. Similarly, over on the other one, I have the sides. Now, if we want side angle side, that means that the angle is going in the middle. And if the angle is going in the middle, it's got to be in between these two sides. It must be here. So in this case, Angle L is the angle that we're interested in. It's in between the two sides. And similarly, angle H for the other triangle. So what additional information do we need? We would have needed these markings in order to complete the three pieces that we were going for. So those markings right there, that would be uh, angle L. And then that has to be congruent to angle H. So let's be clear. This was is still needed. They didn't give it to us. But if we did have that, that would be enough. So that's kind of where we're going with this. All right, let's go back and take a look at a couple of other ones here. Um, so first, number 11. Um, or second, I guess I should say. We're not doing it first. It says side angle side, and I have a side here, and we have a side here. And so you could say that out of the side angle side, we do have the, the first S, but we don't know about the others. So what about these two over there, the, the A and the S? We don't know about those, do we? Oh, wait a second. Something's happening here in the middle. I can feel it. Those are vertical angles. Now we got a crisscross intersection, and when you do that, you get opposite sides of that crisscross intersection are vertical angles. And for us, and for everybody for that fact, vertical angles are congruent. Because vertical angles are congruent, that means we have the sides and we have the angle. Okay, so now here's the, the next part. Side, angle, side. The angle is in the middle. So the angle is in the middle. And if the angle is in the middle, then that means this, we have one side of the little three-part combo. We need the other side. So if I have side, angle, I have either HJ or IJ. If I were to choose HJ, the angle wouldn't be in the middle. So that means I would have to choose IJ. Similarly, over here I have EG or EI, um, well, I would need it to be EI because if I chose EG, that would not be with the angle in the middle. I'd have the two sides here, and that would mean the angle in the middle would be G over there, which I don't know. I need to keep this angle in between the two sides. So there's the two things that I still need. That's the additional information. So I would need to know that JI is congruent to EI. It's still needed. It's not there, but if it were there, we'd have congruence for the triangles. All right, let's do one more just to kind of get the general idea here. Side, side, side. So what do we have going on this time? Well, I have a side and that's it. I just have one side is what's marked. Now there's still more there and that's for example this shared overlapping side and that is the the reflexive property. So by reflexive property that shared side is congruent to itself. 
So we have a side here, and we got a side here. Then we have a side here, and that same side duplicated. So what's the third item that we need? We got a side, we have another side, we need the third side. So let's triple mark that one. It, there's only one side left, so this one's almost easier than the other two. And that'd be XD, and then we got ZY. So XD needs to match up with ZY. And <clears throat> so long as it does, then we're golden, we're sold. All right, so XD is congruent to ZY, is still needed. Do I keep having to write is still needed? No, it's kind of implied in the prompt, but I'm just trying to be very clear to you that it's not given, but if it were given, it would be enough. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. And remember, we're going by the design they went with here. They were asking for a very specific combination, so that was to try and kind of get us focused on something. I'm going to take a look at the other worksheet here. We're going to pause and then pull right back through the magic of video. So for this next one, again, it's saying state, state, what additional information, what additional information, what do you still need? The difference now, patterns change. So we're looking at angle, side, angle. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we're also going to look at angle, angle, side, which is really just a subset of angle, side, angle, but we'll, we'll include it just for good practice. So angle, side, angle. So I have this angle here, D, C, D, Q, you could say, and C, D, E. And I also have a side. So you don't see it marked, but we do know it because this side in the middle there is by reflexive property congruent. So reflexive property tells us, hey, that side's overlapping itself. It's congruent. So we have that. So if it says angle, side, angle, notice that the side is in between. Okay, so if the side is in between, then we just need to have the other angle on the other side of this angle. So we have one on the right here, so let's go for one on the left. So there's my double arc, and then I'll do another double arc down there. So these two angles need to be congruent to each other. Now it's not enough for me to just say angle C is congruent to angle C because it's a little bit ambiguous. We don't know which angle C are we talking about. So let's be more specific. QCD would be one of them. And the other one would be ECD. Excellent. That was it for that one. All right, let's, let's do one last one. We'll jump down here to angle, angle side. This one's a little bit different. Notice that the side is not in between. It's not in between, it's outside. And then you're asking, well, then which way do we go? I don't know. Well, it's, there, it, there's actually more than one answer for some of these, like for number 16. We have angle, angle, you could do this side or this side because neither of those are in between. And But for 15, it is a little more specific. So let's see what, the, what we do have. Because we have an overlapping side here by reflexive property, this is congruent. It's congruent to itself. So then I'm looking at these two angles and it says angle, angle, side. I have my side. I have this angle which is right next to that side touching it. So I got to keep going in that same direction just a little bit further away. So I got to keep going past the D over to the E. So I would need to say that E and T are congruent. Now what if I chose the other one over here like E, C, D, this angle there? That would not work for me because that would give me two angles with the side between and that's not what they were asking for. They were asking for angle, angle, side with the side not in between. So we need angle E and angle T congruent to each other. Angle E is congruent to angle T and then we're done. That's it. It's that easy guys. So go back, double check this, watch it, see it, view it, all that kind of stuff. And have a good one.